It's time for another stock review. Ticker symbol STNE Stone Company. If you're one of my members, I can I will do a full review for you. And then we put this out on social media and we try to reach out to the CEOs of the company for reaction. Members and, and people that work there, we love to interview you. We have a series called Meet the CEO. So if you want to be on our show, discuss your company, we'd love to hear from you. So please do DM me and I'd love to have you on the show. This is our first time looking at the stock in this video. Video. We're going to start off nice and simple. Some people complain sometimes. It's a very simple review. Well, if you watch a few minutes in, you'll see it gets deep down into the numbers. We, we discover who's buying the stock on the inside, who's selling the stock, uh, what the margins are, what their debt position is. We look at the balance sheet. We look at the intrinsic value, but we look deeper into that and explain what that really means. We back test it compared to the S&P. We go deep dive into the company, whether we should uh, invest in it ourselves and hopefully provide you with some useful information. So we start off very simple. Yes, looking at a very basic uh, chart. And then we go down further into the video and it gets more and more in depth. But uh, that's how we do things. So please do click subscribe or ring the bell if you want to be made a uh, note, if you want to be notified of my content. Make sure that when you do uh, subscribe, you do ring the bell and set the notifications to all. Otherwise, you won't be notified about the breaking news and things like uh, inside trading when it happens. I find out about it and share it with you. Uh, you won't know about that. Make sure that you tap the like button if you like the content and you share it. If you do a super thanks under the video, it'll actually highlight and promote the video as well. And I will pin it to the top. The first one that does that gets pinned to the top. Okay, so here we go. Stone Company. What is it? We're going to start very, very simple. First of all, full disclosure, this is not financial advice. But I've had success investing. I started with $5,000 and we're just coming up to $55,000, $56,000 in two and a half years. So I'm doing all right. However, this is just my opinions, but it's my opinions based on facts. No one can ever sponsor me to say anything great about a company. I just share with you the numbers and our most advanced algorithmic, algorithmic software. I always struggle saying that. Anyway, what is, uh, uh, what is this? Stone Company engages in the provision of financial technology solutions. It caters the merchants and partners that conduct electronic commerce cr across uh, in-store, online, and mobile channels. The firm offers cloud-based technology platform, electronic payments, and automation of businesses processes at the point of sale. The company was founded by Andre Street, uh, in 2020 and is headquartered in Georgetown, Cayman Islands. Okay, that's interesting. I've actually been to the Cayman Islands. It's a lovely place. They've got all these like, um, like monsters running around, like uh, not monsters, but like giant lizards in the Cayman Islands. It's famous for these massive, great uh, lizards and interesting stuff. And you, you go to the Cayman Islands to put your gold and your diamonds and open up a bank account. Very interesting place, the Cayman Islands. Uh, I actually tried to open a bank account there once and it wasn't as easy as you think it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, Pedro Zinna. Pedro Zinna is the CEO, employs 16,685 employees, headquarters in Georgetown, of course. I went, I've been to Georgetown as well. I know this place. I can't believe it. It's the first time of looking at it, but I've actually been to this town. This is where I tried to open a bank account, uh, but it was it wasn't I wasn't able to do it. Anyway, maintenance requirement, 25. So it's regarded as low risk if you're using margin. The highest is 100% and the lowest is 10 is 25. So there we go. 4.19 is the market cap. Price to earnings ratio, 21. So it makes money, right? Price to earnings ratio. Now, whenever you look at this, you've got to compare it to other sectors. I'm guessing SoFi could probably be in this sector. So I'd want to be looking at SoFi as a comparison. No point comparing it to another, you know, Virgin Galactic for example, or Google, they're not in the same business. Every business, every sector has its own uh, ratio. And uh, of course, if it's a growth stock, you might be paying more than the stock is actually worth. Price to earnings ratio, like we've seen 190, I think was the highest for... Um 
for uh, Tesla. Now it's running around about the lowest, which is pretty good. Best time to buy Tesla at the moment. So you, you got to remember that, that you can pay a lot for a growth stock that has huge growth because people will overpay for the stock because they're expecting it to grow. So 21 uh, doesn't sound too bad, but I've got to compare it to somebody else. All right. So make sure that you do that. I'm not going to do that right now. High today is 1418. Low today is 1346. 52 week high 1483. And the low 52 week low is 809. So some volatility there, but not excessive. All right. Scrolling down, let's have a quick look. This is very basic stuff right now. We're going to get deeper in a minute. So bear with me. Analysts are on, on Morningstar, uh, this is very simple stuff. They say it's a strong buy. This was... Um done a few weeks ago, so it's not always accurate at this level. Um, but nevertheless, 47% buy, a hold 41%, and a sell 11%. Now, we are seeing a very positive earnings here. Uh, you can see not that long ago in in uh, in Q1 of uh, of 22, we were, we were just turning profitable. Uh, now, the company is consistently making profit, consistently surprising the analysts. The analysts don't know how to uh, rate this very very accurately at the moment. They keep missing the uh, actual number. Uh, good, as it turns out. They are undervaluing it and consistently... That's not very often you see a uh, fintech company, which I'm thinking this probably is, uh, type company beating consistently the earnings, which it, it undoubtedly is. Small uh, earnings, but nevertheless earnings and beating it. Estimated on the last earnings was 22 cents per share, and they actually made 27. Good. Looking good so far. Very, very nice. Just some latest news here I'll just share with you on November the 14th, a few days ago. Um what does it say here? Stone announces new share repurchase program of up to uh, 1 billion uh, R dollars. And that's probably the Cayman dollars or something like that. I'm not quite sure what R is, but uh, 1 billion. We need to know how much that is. That might not be a billion US dollars. I don't know. Need to do your research of what the R stands for. I'm sure I'm assuming it's the Cayman Islands dollar. I don't know. Anyway, there you go. The ruble, maybe not the ruble. I don't know. You need to check that out yourself. But that's always good. And that's always encouraging when a stock is bought back by the company. Shows uh, a very good sentiment. Let's have a look down here before we go into the serious stuff of uh, who buys and sells this stock. These are the people that trade on Robinhood, uh, only Robinhood, uh, who buy and sell this company. Teladoc, good, interesting. Kathy Wood likes that. C Limited, honestly, I don't know anything about C, Block, or Upstart. Uh, I know a bit about Twilio, and I know a reasonable, about, a reasonable amount on PayPal, which is a fintech. So it tells you the sort of um, the sort of the sentiment behind this talk. I'm not going to give that any uh, positive or negative, to be honest with you. Don't know enough on those particular stocks at the moment to give my opinion on that. So I won't. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, go and share with you the company website. Now, this is important before we get into the big numbers uh, because I like to look at uh, the, the, the company's website and see how they project themselves to the world. Uh, you can learn more information and primarily, I'll, I mean, the, uh, the investor, how they present themselves. I believe presentation is important, as you can tell from my studio. I am very much about presentation and depth of quality is important, not uh, to think that the presentation is not important. It, it is. Uh, okay, this is some investor information. Uh, we'll just have a quick look at it. Total revenue income, $11.5 billion. Uh, we will just, uh, total payment volume, uh, $395 billion, but this is R. Somebody might uh, find out and let me know soon what R stands for. It's obviously their their currency. But we are going to go into uh, much, much more uh, detail in a minute. I'm going to give this... Uh, this uh, website a uh, five out of 10. Uh, it's clean, but it's a uh, quite basic website, if I'm honest. Um, anything, any stock information there, investor, let's have a look. Anything we really want to look at? Analyst coverage, let's see what anyone says about the stock. We will go into, uh, into this deep in a moment, but uh, it's quite a clean website. 
Um, but uh, I'll give it a five out of 10 for presentation. Go and check it out yourself if you want to get more out of that. But anyway, let's go now into what's important, the, the details of the company, whether you should buy it or not, and whether it's of any value to you. Right, let's have a look. So we use Alpha Spread. Now, this is probably the best algorithmic software available. Uh, it brings all the software, all the answers to your questions in one place. I use it as, as among, uh, among others. My members get a lifetime discount, which basically gives my membership for free. Hi, Ty. Thanks for your subscription. Uh, to this service, um, and all my members also get uh, a link, a referral, I'll give at the end, where you can set up a free uh, version of the software, where you can have a couple of stocks you can review, like I am, in depth uh, a, a month. So that's quite nice as well, right? So you can have that if you wait till the end of the video, I'll give you the referral. Very, very advanced algorithmic software. Let's look first of all at the intrinsic value. And we need to understand the intrinsic value on its own is not enough. You need to know more about it, which is why we're doing this review. And uh, there, there can be uh, uh, undervaluation or overvaluation warnings as well. And we'll come on to those if they exist for this stock. Best case scenario. Now, we are talking uh, a financial uh, stock. We are talking a fintech. So best case scenario, we're talking about interest rates, which we're talking about in, in, in inflation, all of which are bad right now, historically, but coming down in the spring. Uh, so that's going to get better for, for the user of this particular product. Best case uh, is 38%. Okay, well, best case scenario, uh, we're not there at all at the moment, but uh, we, we are going to move in a much better situation next year. Best case scenario, they value the stock at $22. Uh, and and how we get to these numbers is looking at the profit, the margins, the balance sheet, and everything else to give us these valuations. They're not just made up numbers, all right? Okay, uh, base case scenario, base case, which we regard as more reliable, stock worth sixteen seventy six. It's undervalued by 16% from where it is today. That's a good sign uh, because anything less than that, you might as well just buy the SNP and have no real risk or, uh, relatively uh, anyway. So, you, you know, that's that's quite good. Worst case scenario, if we value the stock at $13, overvaluation at five. Now then, how long has the company been around? Let me just check uh, from looking around here. 2000, it's been around 23 years. So it's not a new company anymore. We can't we can't give it free grace and say, hey, it's a new company. So, you know, we can give it some free grace. It's been around since 2000. So it's had time to grow um, and 23 years, in fact. So for a new company that's innovating, that's proprietary, unique, I will pay happily 25 percent on the base case overvaluation because uh, it can grow into its stock price. This, on the worst case scenario, is just 5%. So it's pretty good, actually, from that point of view as well. Um, so I'm happy with the valuation so far. Wall Street, give it a 9%. Target, relative value is 40%, DCF down 77%, intrinsic value down 5%, and the price is 14 today. Okay, there's no warnings here, which is good. There's no warning on the uh, on a valuation trap. So this is regarded as reliable with our software information. So we like that. So it does look to me that it is uh, undervalued, even on the worst case, you can give it uh, a, a good valuation. Now, if we look at the historic uh, profit, 123%, current valuation, 16%, price and value correlation, that's the price between the valuation correlated together, 6% of the time it's, it's accurate. The value of CAGR is 6%. Now, we can see uh, that uh, it was it was a good valuation here, over here, and you might go, well, how does that make sense? The price was higher. Remember, the price of a stock doesn't mean the value of the stock. You might have a higher price because at that period of time, the company making more profits, their margin is lower, their balance sheet is better, their debts are, le are less, whatever. So you had a good uh, valuation here when the stock price was around about $36, and it was showing a, uh, a, if I zoom in, make it clearer for you, undervalued by 24, 32%, uh, right? Well, over here, 
the share price is undervalued again. And, and as you can see, the share price is a lot lower, but the valuation uh, uh, is increased because um, the valuation and the price are completely separate. So now is a good time historically to buy the stock. So not only is it good and it's undervalued historically. It's a good. It's a. It's an. It's a better valuation than it was over here. But we need to understand not because the price is down, because of the overall performance of the company. All right. Okay, that's all good so far. So it's got all ticks from me. Um, uh, but I, 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 in the fintech space, the money space, I know it's a brokerage, but uh, I'm in Robin Hood. Uh, so I am fully um, exposed to this type of market, even though it's not a brokerage, I get it. Uh, I regard um, Robin Hood as it has a credit card and it's bringing out new products um, and, and and so on and so forth. It's, it's a little bit in this space. Um, so I'm all in on Robin Hood, even though it's different. However, uh, I'm in the fintech space, if you like. So I probably won't be looking to buy this um, potentially, but we'll, we'll see. Anyway, let's look at uh, the revenue. Now, the revenue looking very, very good. Um, only back here in 21, we were having 3.9 billion. Now we're looking at 6.1 in December 21, uh, 22, uh, 22, 22, uh, 22, 23, March, uh, June 23, September 23. That's probably our most recent. There we go. September. Let me just have a look at the company website. Um, let me just go back to that a minute. I'm just comparing some information. I always like to uh, check. Yes. Yes, that's accurate as well. Just making sure of that. Yep. Uh, yes, 11.8. But the reason why I checked it is uh, that is not 11.8 billion US dollars. It's their currency, which again is R. I just wanted to just uh, clarify that. If we look here, I can share with you their total revenue. Uh, you can see 11.5 billion. We're showing 11.8. Can you see that? 11.5, 11.8. So just uh, want to be absolutely clear not to confuse anybody with um, the, uh, the valuation. We need to find out what currency that is, but uh, you can see the growth, which is the most important thing. Right. Okay, let me zoom out of there a minute. Operating income, and, and by the way, that's up 6% on this recent range. The operating income is up 9% as well. We're really seeing huge growth. Um, what I will note, however, is uh, the rate of growth on operating income isn't accelerating the same way. You, you could regard, let me explain this, this could be regarded as perhaps the S-curve. Now, you need to know that because uh, all companies uh, have an S-curve if they're successful. They trundle along like this, they explode, it suddenly becomes a great company, and then it levels off like an S, the S-curve. Amazon had it, Tesla have had it. Um, doesn't mean they can't get it again, but uh, if you've got a company that's exploded like that, the time to buy it was here, not necessarily here, because now it just might flatten out. It may then move into a dividend paying stock at some point, and as, as now we are a growth company, but uh, its S curve is, 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 is it, 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 from predictions from an analyst, it looks like uh, it's flattening out. That doesn't mean to say it can't accelerate. Just bear that in mind. If you think, hey, it's done this great pump here, it will do it again. Again, not necessarily. Net income at one billion. Uh, you can see how that's improved from back here in 22. Operating cash flow is looking good, 2.4 billion, up 11%. Capital expenditure uh, up 7%. They are investing. They are spending money. Um, they're investing in the company. Okay, that's fine. We can live with that. Now then, the balance sheet. The balance sheet is everything to me, and uh, this is a very important metric. 43 billion of assets. Very nice. 29.7 billion of liabilities. That's okay. Um, that's okay. What we don't want to see is more liabilities and assets, and we don't want to see it within 95% either. That's, that's okay. That's a range I can live with. 
They have uh, assets, they have liabilities. Uh, if we look cl more closely at the liabilities, we will see long-term debt is 2.7 billion. Okay, their long-term debt is 2.7 billion. So it's manageable if you look at that, compare that to their assets. Okay, that's important. What we don't want to see is long-term debt at 30 billion and they can't get down their debts and all the rest of it. That's not what we want to see. So that's going to show me, that's going to show me a, a, a good, um, that's going to show me a good margin in a minute and a good profitability in a minute when I get to it. It's also going to show me a good runway, a, a profitability score and a solvency score. Well, not necessarily a profit score, but a solvency score will be good. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, there you go. Spot on. Uh, margins are good. 73%. Margin. Why is a margin important? Well, if you're selling something, you might sell lots of it, but if you don't make huge amounts of profit, margin in other words, then uh, you... Uh doesn't matter. You can sell lots of something for a dollar and make lots of money, right? And whatever. But if you are making a, a wide margin, a large margin, then you are protected from macro, macro conditions. It's good because that way, if somebody else comes along and tries to crush your business, they may have smaller margins and you can crush them. So it's good to have a good wide margin. And again, that sounds very high, but not for the fintech space. Uh, if you look at software companies, they have huge margins, whereas somebody like cars, for example, uh, they have very small margins. Uh, uh, Tesla has one of the best margins in the auto space, and uh, they're around about the 23%. They were higher, but they're around about the 23%, whereas Ford make no money on their cars. They make money on their servicing. So you can crush the competition when you have a margin bigger than your competitors. This is a good margin but it's 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 this particular sector has high margins so you've got to understand that okay you can see more details and i can give you links to these details and you can open up all of these and get much more information that i'm able to provide otherwise this would be a two-hour review i'd be here for two hours right uh let's see if i was right there we go i was right the profitability score is 60 now the profitability score is not green we'd like to see it green however anything above 30 40 is okay we start moving into a profitable company um just because you are running at 40 or 50 uh, 30 or 40, uh, which would make you red, doesn't mean you are not making profit. It's just that you're not making enough profit to protect your company from competition and uh, potential bankruptcy or insolvency or whatever. Their profitability score is 60. Uh, we've seen high as, as, as low as 14 and high as like 95. So the profitability score is good. Exceptional three years revenue growth, ex, uh, positive growth profit, positive operating income, and exceptional ROIC. Um, okay, good. Very good. Uh, what about the insolvency, uh, sol the solvency score? If we run that for our system, we get a solvency score of 53, which means it's not going bankrupt anytime soon. Of course, that can change, but uh, right now everything is uh, everything's got a tick. Low DE, a low negative net debt. Remember, I said to you about the debt. The uh, they have long term debt, but compared to the, uh, their their um, assets, it's low. Uh, it's manageable, and it's going to get better with interest rates coming down. So they can only do better on their solvency score and their profit because they'll be spending less on on uh, on their their debt situation. Short term solvency, all good. So everything's great. The company's got a fifty three percent. Anything above forty uh, is looking okay. Uh, we want to see green, of course we do, but it just means the length of the runway before they would actually run out of money in the current climate and the current situation. So everything for this company looks quite good. Uh, I don't need to enter this sector. I'm already in with, with Robin Hood, but uh, this does look quite interesting. Wall Street. Wall Street give it a good uh, analysis. They say a 64% upside, as we can see here from the highest level, from the uh, from the average forecast is an 8% upside, and the lowest would be a 35% downside from here. Uh, so if uh, you think that we are on the on the um, the the average uh, or okay, but we are. 15% from the S&P, well, so 
It's on the line. Worst case scenario, though, we are losing money. That's what the analysts say. That's not what the balance sheet says. That's not what I am saying. That's what the analysts say. OK, so you can bear that in mind. You might then like to look at the competition. As we said, it is in the fintech space. Visa, MasterCard, PayPal will be in there um, and, uh, and others. You can load more stocks. If you click on my link, you can get more information. Uh, let's, there isn't any, uh, latest news. Um, the news is as a year or so ago, so I'm not going to share the news on it today. We've got one final thing to do after this, the back test, the final test before we, uh, release the stock to you and say, go and buy it, which I'm never going to do anyway, but you know what I mean? Right. Uh, the last 90 days, uh, we had, uh, uh 39% good news, a bit of negative, but there's always going to be some. 30 days, the negative news got less. Uh, seven days, the news got less again. And today, uh, it's all good news. Uh, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. A bit of negative news today. Uh, so, that, so, that, so there you go. Um, overall... Over the long term, I'd say the news is getting it's getting more positive and neutral. Today, there's been something, but I'm not showing what that news is at the moment. It hasn't been uh, reported to me yet, so I can't uh, report on that. Anyway, now what we want to do is uh, we want to go to the uh, back test. This is very, very important. I'm going to bring this to you because if you are going to buy anything straight away, <clears throat> the first thing that you want to do is uh, say, well, OK, I've got some investment here to make. Uh, how does it compare to something else? Because at the end of the day, you're not joining a fan club, right? You want to buy the best thing for your money. Um, so what do you want to buy? Well, let's compare it to the S&P. <clears throat> if you put $10,000 in uh, 2019 into the S&P and $10,000 into uh, Stone, this would be your result. The S&P would have returned you $18,000. So you would have made $8,000 uh, and Stone would have lost you money. You'd have gone from $10,000 down to $5,374. So as we've seen, the growth has happened recently uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we look at um, stone is in blue, the S&P uh, is in red, okay? So we started here, we had a nice rally all the way up uh, on stone. So we'd want to know what caused this. So you can do your research. March 2020, of course, was COVID and uh, it, uh, it pumped due to COVID, when, sh when COVID shut down the world, everybody seemed to go online with this particular app and use it. Makes perfect sense. It had a rally. Then, as COVID became sorted out, it started to fall away, whereas the S&P came through it all. Much more diverse portfolio, of course, it came through it all and continued to do well. Whereas uh, it didn't do well during, it didn't do well after COVID. Now, that's a big red flag for me because macro conditions uh, like COVID, they're very rare. They promoted the stock. Now, that's great. It did well, but then it fell away. Well, you could regard, OK, things have gone back to normal now, but it fell away, but then it fell below the growth of the S&P. So there is some good news here, but there's also some warning signs. We looked at the the the, uh, the analysis, uh, the uh, uh, Wall Street analysis. They said the stock uh, has a has a doubt a potential downside. Um, the balance sheet is looking strong. The profitability is looking pretty good, not great, but okay. The uh, the uh, the solvency score looked pretty good. That was all fine. We were happy with that. Um, but uh, is it one to invest in for me? No, it isn't. Uh, I don't like the Cayman Islands idea either, if I'm honest with you. Uh, the Cayman Islands uh, is known for people taking out bank accounts who want to disappear. Uh, however, I, my own experience, I went there. It's not quite as easy as you think. People like to go, that's where you know bank robbers go and that's where bad people go to create a, an accounts. And maybe they do. Uh, I don't know about that, but I tried to create an account and I was unable to do so. And I had everything you need to do it. So it's not as easy as you think. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, I prefer US and UK businesses, based businesses, uh, just because of the 
uh, the, the history and how I can research them. Analysts saying potentially downside, balance sheet's okay. So it's not one for me. I'm not going to buy this, but I wouldn't have bought it anyway because I'm all in on other stocks in a similar field. So there we go. Click above my head if you want the link for uh, for Alpha. All my members can get a, a free plan or a 10% uh, discount. If you uh, want to, to do that, you can. Look below in the description as well. You'll also find the links to that. Uh, if you are working at the company and you'd like to uh, uh, reach out to me, please do call me. I'd love to hear from you or any other companies that look at my reviews. I'd like to review you. I will tell you that uh, Alpha, being one of the leaders in uh, in this sect, in um, providing uh, information on stocks, will review my stock, will re will repl uh, place my review on their website soon. It'll be at the, in the new section because there isn't any. My, my review will be down there later on, probably tomorrow, and no more than 36 hours it will be at the bottom of the review. Of the, uh, of the page. So if you'd like to call me and do a follow-up, I'd like to interview you, learn more about your company, I would uh, very, very happily uh, do that. Check over here. I'll put the review, uh, other things here, like earnings and uh, the full playlist of all my uh, reviews over here, and you can go and check them out. That's it. Thank you very much indeed. That was uh, done for one of my members. I hope you enjoyed it. When this video comes out, if you give it a super thanks, it will uh, it will be promoted by YouTube and the whole world can learn about STNE. Robbie Cooper, thank you very much for your suggestion. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.